Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, I <clears throat> uh, would like to go over data visualization example in Excel, and we are going to go through the best practices uh, with one example, which is the far left side one. And I have already prepared, or the, the data is, has already been prepared for us using pivot tables, where we already have the cross tabulation. So we will start by creating our default graph from Excel, which is this one. So let's create it by selecting this uh, groups with their equivalent data. And then we'll go to insert. And then I will go through recommended, um, uh, call, recommended chart and then I'll select this guy. So I'll select it and then I will uh, click on control X to cut it. And I want to paste it in this area here. So what I need is I want to replicate the ones that I already have here in the left side. So that way I can go through those examples. So it doesn't have here a title, so I'll delete that one. It has a series like uh, the legend. So I'll select the legend, that way I can have the series and so on, but uh, we'll go from there. So that's the default, right? And then I will copy this guy and move to the next processing data. So in other words, we are going to go through this exercise from the default in Excel, all the way to a much cleaner presentable version of this graph, graph uh, or visualization, which is we want to end up with this graph here. This is the optimal goal for us today in this exercise. But we need to go step by step and that way we can learn the best practices and how to do that uh, uh, sequentially. So first we need to, I'll copy and paste this guy to here. So we can start by removing um, the grid lines. So again, uh, we said that we need one of the best practices or principles of data visualizations is we increase the data ink ratio, right? We need to make sure that we have only ink related to the data. Anything, any ink that is not related to the data, like the grid line here, we need to get rid of, right? So I will uh, select the grid line and then click on delete to remove it. And then we need to uh, lower the number of Y axis. So now we have so many, we need to lower them to only four instead of six. To do that, I can just right click. I can right click on uh, the Y axis and then format axis. So I can get this guy here. I need to increase here the maximum to 30. And then the major, I'll put it to 10. The minor, I'll put it to five and then enter. All right, so now I have my, um, I have met this one, which is removing the grid line and lowering the number of Y axis tick marks. All right, so now I will copy this guy and move to the next, next step. So the next step here, now, they want us to avoid rotating text. Again, I don't need to tilt my head in order to be able to read uh, the categories here at the bottom. So we need to avoid that. And in order to avoid that, we need to change the chart type. So to change the chart type, and they want us to remove the series name. So let's select this guy and remove it first before I change the... So I need to change now the chart type instead of column chart, I want to change it to... Uh, bar chart. So to do that, I select the, the graph or the chart and then go to chart design and then change chart type. I want it to be bar chart instead, right? Now it's much better. I can easily actually read it now without having to tilt my head. All right, so now I can see here they are going from A to D while this one going from D to A. So to uh, I need to make this match this one. So to do that, I need to select the X axis or the Y axis, right? And then I need to go to this bar uh, and then access options. And then I want categories in reverse order. All right, now I have it in a nice matching way to that one that I already had on, on my previous graph, right? Looks good. So I'll copy this guy and move on to the next step. So they want us to order here, order bars. So I need to order the bars. 
from in an in a descending way, starting from the high to the low, uh, to the low, right? So to do that, I need actually to order the data set itself or the data source. So I will select this chart, and then I will go to chart design and then select the data. So instead of I already organized here in a in a ascending way. So also, and in other words, they are ordered or organized in this way. So I'll select this, this, um, uh, these categories with the numbers that they are ordered and I'll select, okay. Now you can see it's beautifully already done, but it's in a ascending way. So again, I'll go back and go to access options and they will uncheck categories in reverse order. Now they are in the correct order, right? Perfect. So now I have this guy, copy, order bars. Now let's move to remove border. I'll put it here. It's already selected, so I need to remove border. So I'll go here and then say no line. All right, so again, that's part of data ink ratio. Uh, we need to remove uh, borders. Then I will move on to the next step. And here they said, if reasonable number of bars, consider data labels instead of access labels. All right, so in other words, I need to get rid of the X axis. And uh, instead I need to put the labels inside the bars uh, instead to reduce or to make it easier for people to know exactly, because here it's kind of an estimation if I tell, if I ask what is category B, what is the exact number? It's an estimation between 20 and 25 or 30. So I need the exact number. To do that, I need to select the X axis and then remove it. And then I can use the plus sign and say data labels. And then I can use inside end. And the numbers are already there. So I can change the font of the numbers to white. That way, it can be visible. What else I can do, I need to also increase the size of the bar. I don't want to increase it too much and I don't want to reduce it too much, right? So again, here where it says gap width, I need to keep it at 50%. 50% and enter now, it is much reasonable, right? So now I'll copy this guy, control C to copy it with the shortcut. And then I will move on here where it says fine tune colors and engrave them out. We don't want dark colors. So everything is already tuned or not bold in bold. So I'm good with that. And what else? Now we want to add context. So for us, we want to show that our category B has already exceeded the target line, which is 16. So in other words, I need to add the target line. You can have to tell my story here. And to, to add that target line, you can just uh, go to insert and then shapes and select the line there and select here and drag and drop all the way here to create the line. And just move it a little bit here. That way it's in the 16. Now we can format this line while it is selected. I can go to the dash type. I want it to be this dash. And I want to increase the width of it to one point. And then I need to change the color to a darker color. That way I can see it better. Now I need to add also this, uh, what it says target 16%. So to do that, I need to go to insert again, shapes, and then to the text. And then I say, I will type target. 16%, then I can resize it. And then I can change the color of it from here. All right, so it looks good. All right, so um, now I have context to it. So I added that target. So in other words, category B, uh, is 23 while the target is 16. So it has exceeded the target by seven points, right? By seven units. 
So now let's, uh, I will copy this guy again. And then I will move on. And those are other examples of what not to do. So we need to have with start borders on bars. So no borders here. See, we don't have borders. And then no 3D bars, no have with connected bars and have with two narrow bars. So that's what we have. We have very reasonable bars there. So I will move on. This is the ultimate goal. That's what how we want our our graph to look like. We want to add a title to tell the story. So a chart title. And the chart title here needs to say, so I'll just copy this guy. And then I will resize it. So I'll just uh, put it this, and then I'll resize this guy. All right, so now, minute, so that's good enough for now. And then I have the target, and then I can add even more information about the source, who created it, and so on. But you get the idea now, the story can be told in a very nice way, but I need here category, I need to change categories. Um, so let me increase this guy. That way I can increase this guy. All right, now this is good enough. So all I need to do now is to change the categories uh, instead of category B, C, D, and A, I need to have actual names of the product or which includes banana. And to do that, I, I need to do it in the data source. So I already have them here. So let's select this graph and then go to chart design and select data. And I'm gonna select this guy. All right, so now I have a very beautiful graph that tells the story that I want to tell. And uh, it has all the information that I need, including I can also need, I can include also um, uh, this information. So let's see if I can put it here. So the source, we can put it here. It's a good, a good habit to put the source and where you got this data from and who has done it and what is the date. So this is kind of the, the basics of uh, creating graphs and, and tells the story without me having to explain it to anyone. Anyone can look at this graph and understand what I want to convey, saying that banana has exceeded the target by seven units and I show it show me the numbers, right? That, that's exactly what this, this uh, graph is telling us. I hope that helps and uh, I will stop here.